Daniel Levy has given the green light for Tottenham to pursue a deal for Christian Romero as the club grow increasingly confident that they can get a deal over the line. That is according to Alistair Gold. So many other sources are giving us very positive stories on our pursuit of Mr. Romero. And there are so many other stories to get, so many stories to get through. We've got Jules Kunde. We've got, of course, uh, recapping the Pierluigi Gallini thing. We've got news on Sanchez, Dyer, Suzoko, and Dombele, Lo Celso, Sessegnon, Winks, uh, Alderweireld, Kane, Bergwijn, Gazaniga, Anderson, Chukwuemeka, so many other players. There's so much to get through. And because of that, we're going to dive straight into it. And this is the news from uh, Alistair Gold on Christian Romero. He has said, Spurs chairman Daniel Levy has given the green light to move for Christian Romero with the club currently in advanced negotiations for the defender. There's a growing confidence within Spurs that an agreement can be reached with Atalanta for Romero as negotiations continue to advance over a complicated deal, though nothing has been agreed yet. And that's the key part there. Nothing yet has been agreed between Tottenham and Atalanta. If we're to believe what Fabrizio Romano said, which I highly recommend that we do, Tottenham do have an agreement in place with the player over personal terms. That is a five-year contract with a potential option for a sixth year in that. Uh, Romano does touch on complications there within the deal, and I've spoken about it quite a bit in the channel. But the um, the main complications are the fact that Christian Romero is essentially a Juventus player. Now, the reason we are negotiating with Atalanta is because they have the player on a two-year loan. We're halfway through that spell and they have an option to make that loan permanent this summer for €16 million. Euro. So we are negotiating with Atalanta. They will make that deal permanent from Juventus if they get an offer they like from Tottenham and then immediately send him on to the North London club, which they seem to be doing for a profit of about €30 million. Euro. It's a fantastic deal for Atalanta and it is a good deal for Spurs as well. Perhaps the price a bit higher uh, than I would have preferred, than I would have expected. But it's the Serie A defender of the year from last year. The man who really, really uh, secured that Atalanta defence last season. Coming in to potentially play with his teammate from last year in Pierluigi Gallini, who this morning officially joined Spurs. Um, Sky Italy have also been talking in the last hour or so about this. They said Christian Romero wants to play in the Premier League and feels ready to do so. He is now pressing to go to Tottenham. The two clubs are negotiating in regards to a €10 million Euro bonus fee. So the base fee will be around €40 or €45 million. Euro. Uh, and they're the five-year contract plus one year as an extra option. So it's the it's the bonus fee that the clubs are now trying to finalise. It does look as though the base fee of about 40 to 45 million euro is confirmed. Um, Fences Spurs are moving like a top club. Come on, you Spurs. Jordan says, you're my hero, Matt. Thanks a million, Jordan. I appreciate that. Um, Cody said this rebuild might happen a lot quicker than we could have hoped for. Come on, you Paratichis. Um, and this is moving very, very fast at the moment. We go through a lot of other uh, kind of less reliable reports, but reports nonetheless about this. And all of them say that this deal is close to completion. But it does need to be noted, as with those complications I mentioned a second ago, we could get news tomorrow that everything is agreed, that everything has been finalised. It could still take quite a while for this deal to officially be done because of the fact that Atalanta will need to sign him from Juventus, get all of that finished, and then uh, move on to um Tottenham trying to sign him as well so this one is one that I, I don't think will be announced uh very very quickly but is one that should be announced eventually as the clubs become very very close to an official agreement on a bid on a fee agreements with the player are done personal terms are agreed a five-year contract with one year as an extra option and I've been questioning why Romero would take the step down from Atalanta a Champions League side to Spurs a Europa Conference League side and I think it's there in Sky Italia's report that he wants to play in the Premier League Premier League football is a massive attraction to, to so many players and Romero was willing to make that step on a European football sense down to Spurs to try and build a little bit more in the Premier League and potentially get Tottenham back into the Champions League, which is what we all want, of course. But very good news coming out in this one today that a deal is close to being agreed. Romero was pushing for it to happen. He actively wants to join Spurs. He is doing what he can now to try and make that happen. And this is one that I do expect to be completed before the end of the transfer window. We'll just go through those uh, less reliable reports. Um, Arvin says, let's uh, let's get this one done. I hope we, we do get it done. Cody says, smash a like. Everyone, please do hit that like button. Uh, Gazzetta della Sport say that Tottenham are the big favourites to secure the signature of Christian Romero and have already moved to complete a deal with the player and Atalanta. They are expected to agree a deal worth £45 million pounds plus bonuses. Carriero della Sport say that Fabio Paratici is waiting for Christian Romero to arrive in London. There's already an agreement in principle for the defender to make the move. Spurs will be willing to pay 40 million plus 10 million euro in bonuses that Atalanta have demanded. Romero is ready to complete the move. So according to that, maybe Romero is uh, in the next couple of days going to make his way to London to try and finalise everything with Tottenham. Uh, Calcio Mercato say that Tottenham are ready to pay up to 50 million euro for Christian Romero. Atalanta have identified Mary Demeral as a replacement, which would then give Juventus the funds to purchase Manuel Locatelli. So maybe uh, an incredible transfer domino effect uh, getting underway here which would ultimately 
prevent Arsenal from signing Manuel Locatelli if there is even a chance for that to happen at the moment. Finally, Carriera de la Serra, I say that Christian Romero has his suitcase ready and will go to Tottenham. 42 million euro plus 10 million in bonuses. Atalanta will now go sign Mary Demerov to replace him. So that is the general, uh, that's exactly what's going on today. These are all reports that came out today. Uh, it's only four o'clock and this is what we've heard on this already. Um, it's been extremely busy, but like I say, the general theme within these ones is that Tottenham are set to sign uh, Christian Romero and it is, it, it's going to happen. It, it's essentially the, the way I'm feeling at the moment. Um, uh, Farhan says, Matt, how do you feel about a transfer window consisting of Galini, Gil, Romero, Kunde, Awer, Tamiyazu and Ings? Um, I think I had a question similar to that yesterday. I think we need uh, a better striker than Danny Ings, but Awer as a midfielder um, is, is definitely a good option. Um, Oscar says Alistair Gold also said it'll cost about £38.5 million which isn't around that €45 million euro mark um, so I think fairly consistent news there on that one uh, we'll touch on Toby Alderweire in a second but first of all I do want to touch on another centre-back that could be coming in and uh, according to my sources Tottenham have made an official bid of €50 million euro plus €5 million euro in bonuses and Davinson Sanchez for Jules Kunde. Now, unless the player changes his personal stance and his feelings towards Spurs the deal simply will not happen and also if Rafael Varane leaves Madrid, Kunde will go there. So that is what I have been told about this uh, Kunde situation. We've made an official bid of 50 plus 5 million and Davinson Sanchez for Jules Kunde. Uh, Jordan says, you think he's spending the Kane money? I find it hard to see where else this money will be coming from, but I still don't think Harry Kane is leaving. That's, that, that's just the way I'm sitting at the moment. I, I personally can't see a situation where Romero, Kunde and Harry Kane are all as far as I'll explain in a second different ways that that might happen. But personally, I can't see it happening. And I, I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so why why this deal with Jules Kunde could potentially make sense? Why this bid? Joshua, journalists aren't the only people who have sources. And come on. Uh, so why this deal makes sense? Demarzio reported a few weeks ago that Tottenham had agreed a deal with Sevilla worth 30 million plus Davinson Sanchez. Now, of course, this is quite a bit higher than that. And the reason why that makes sense is look, it was, it was always going to be more than what had been rumoured in recent weeks because after the sale of Brian Gill, Tottenham or Sevilla now no longer need to sell Jules Kunde. And Marcus said this a couple of days ago. They said that they don't now need an injection of cash, which is what was essentially pushing them towards allowing Jules Kunde to leave um, for a little bit cheaper. So they don't need to sell him. And now they can do it at their on their own terms. So they can push that price up. Kunde has an... Uh, Kunde has a a release clause of about 80 million euro in that contract. So 50 plus five and Davinson Sanchez is valuing Sanchez at about 25 million euro, which I think if we were to sell him straight up is a deal that we would all accept at the moment. Um, so that is why the the higher price makes sense because Sevilla don't need to sell Kunde. They can hold out for a higher price and they do, they do seem to be doing that. We already know they like Sanchez. Every source is telling us that, that the, their sporting director is a big fan of Davinson Sanchez and they want to sign him. So they could potentially, uh, it, it is fantastic leverage within that deal for Spurs to, uh, to add Sanchez and bring that price down a bit. Now, the second uh, thing I'm going to read out here is from Danny Kiriakou at the Bun on Twitter, which I think he put it absolutely perfectly. Um, with regards to getting Kunde and Romero, he said, honestly, it is possible. If the reports are true and it's £47 million pounds for Romero uh, and the the instalments that Fabrizio Romano said that um, uh, Atlanta are willing to accept, £47 million pounds over four years could work out at about £11.75 million pounds per year, which is essentially nothing. That means using... Uh, that, that's all we'd fork out this season to try and get Kunde using, da using Davinson Sanchez and money. So if we are, for example, going to pay £11.75 million pounds for, per year for Christian Romero, that is being funded by Toby Alderweireld's transfer to Aldo Hale, which we'll talk about in a second. So then, essentially, we're not spending any money on Romero this summer. We're losing Alderweireld and we're getting him in and the rest of that fee will be paid in the coming years which is incredible that Atalanta are willing to do that because they will need to sign a replacement for Romero. They are going to get Mary Demerell, um, but they're willing to take this in installments. And that is why that is where this does become possible. It's not exactly likely. And again, on a personal level, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I, I don't think we will end up with Kunde, Romero and Harry Kane. But if it does happen, that is a way that it could go through. And that is a way that it is uh, in some extent possible. Uh, Bobby says absolutely fantastic stuff again. Vote for Hayes. Thank you very much, Bobby. I appreciate it. Um, Alistair Gold has also spoken on uh, Jules Kunde. He said Kunde could be a deal Fabio Paratici looks to conclude if he can continue to raise funds through sales. The defender's first choice is Real Madrid, but should they not make a move for the player, it is he is understood, uh, or should they not make a move, the player is understood to have an interest in joining. So Romano did say that um, Real Madrid would not move for Kunde. From what I've heard, that's uh, that situation may have changed. Alistair Gold saying the same that uh, 
you know, Kunde wants Real Madrid and should they let Varane go, they could potentially move in for Kunde. And my personal feeling is that he could hold out uh, as long as he possibly can on a move to Tottenham in order to see what happens with Varane and what happens at Real Madrid. The report today from Jose Felix Diaz that Varane has actually turned down a new contract at Real Madrid and he's not going to actively push through for a transfer to United but he wants it to happen he's agreed personal terms with the club but he won't disrespect Real Madrid in trying to force it through but that is a possibility this summer that Varane goes on there and then Real Madrid could move in for Jules Koundé uh, a final report there from not a particularly reliable source Carriera de la Serra said that the deal for Koundé from Sevilla has broken down Spurs tried adding Davinson Sanchez into the deal but a deal could not be completed um, I'm not sure how much uh, how seriously we can take that one but um, that is the latest on that uh, to touch on Toby Alderweireld just to continue the theme of centre-backs uh, Fabrizio Romano said today that talks are ongoing between Aldo Hale and Tottenham over the transfer of Toby Alderweireld Charlie Eccleshare says that Toby Alderweireld is closing in on a deal to join Qatar Stars League side Aldo Hale Tuna Mercato say the reported sale of Spurs defender Alderweireld is to make room for defensive target Christian Romero and Christoph Terror says that Aldo Hale are expecting Alderweireld to arrive in Doha later today ahead of his potential move to Spurs he will discuss personal terms before making a decision after his visit so that is the four reports there on Alderweireld He's not believed to be entirely convinced about moving out to the Middle East, about moving to Qatar to try and get things done there. There is believed to be interest from La Liga, Serie A and the Jupiter Pro League in Belgium. That could be a more uh, realistic target for him. But Toby is open to this move and is going to be in talks as best as he possibly can uh, with Aldo Hale to try and get this deal to happen. Now, Aldo Hale are currently managed by Sabri Lamouchi, the former Nottingham Forest manager. So there is a bit of a connection there with England. Um, and a lot of players have gone out there. You know, Xavi is currently managing Al Saad and you find... Uh, a lot of former Premier League players, probably more than you think out in the in the Qatar Stars League. Uh, but that is the latest with Oliver Weirald. I'm surprised that's where he could potentially be going because I did feel when, when it became known that he wanted to leave Spurs, I felt it would be a case of him going back to Belgium. You know, Royal Antwerp, his home club, his hometown club wanted him. He apparently wanted them. But potentially Aldo Hale in Qatar is the next club for Toby Oliver Weirald. Um, before we move on to any other potential outgoings, uh, we had... Uh, as we often do from Alistair Gold, a huge list of updates on players currently at the club and they're all very valuable to us, uh, these updates in terms of what they mean for Tottenham's transfer window, who could be going out and what positions we could potentially be trying to strengthen. Um, Davinson Sanchez is attracting interest from a variety of clubs, including Spanish side Sevilla, as we already know. Spurs would listen to offers for Sanchez and Eric Dyer this summer should they arrive in order to bring in two new centre-backs. So on the base of it, we want two new centre-backs. If that Sanchez, Dyer... And Oliver Weirel to go. I would personally imagine there will be a third coming in, uh, but uh, we haven't really quite got clarification of that just yet. Um, moving into the midfield, Musa Sissoko is expected to leave the club this summer with interest from a number of clubs across Europe. The main team widely reported to be interested in Sissoko at the moment is Napoli. Um, Gold also says that Tottenham central midfield could see a number of changes before the transfer window closes, with Spurs open to offers for Musa Sissoko and Harry Winks. So the club are at the moment listening to offers for Harry Winks. A team reportedly linked with him are uh, Everton. The Beautiful Game podcast and Fabrizio Romano said that Winks to Everton is a possibility and we should get more clarification on that over the coming days. Staying with the midfield, Tongi Ndombele and Giovanni Lascelso are expected to play a key creative role this season for Tottenham in both deeper and more advanced roles under Nuno, so no potential exit for the two of them. They are in Nuno's plans. And finally, Ryan Sessegnon is expected to compete with Ben Davis and Sergio Reglan for the left-back spot this season. Nuno Espirito Santo is a big fan of the player and tried to sign him whilst Wolves manager. So those are the key updates from uh, Alistair Gold. We'll be talking about those in depth a lot more tonight at 7pm. Uh, David Harris, the Irish Hotspur, Danny Kiriakou, the Bun, and hopefully another guest as well. Um, we'll be discussing those in a bit more detail. Uh, just to bring you some quotes uh, and some context to the signing of Pierluigi Gallini this morning. Uh, if you didn't see, Tottenham have completed the signing of Pierluigi Gallini on an, an initial one-year loan deal from Atalanta with an option to buy for €15 million Euro next summer. That option will become an obligation if the player makes 20 appearances for Tottenham this season. Gallini said, I'm here to show that I can be the future of Tottenham. I'm now here with Hugo. He's a legend of this club. As a team, we have to be really ambitious. We have to try and win something. And this is a big club and this should be our goal. He also said he's excited to learn uh, from Hugo Lloris. Um, with regards to the training ground and stuff like that, Galini was asked about it. And he said that his uh, the, his Italian teammates that played in Euro 2020, of course, they trained at Hotspur Way and they stayed at Hotspur Way the night before the final against England. He said they told him uh, just how fantastic the facilities were. And uh, he said, my Italian teammates told me, just go, don't even think about it. And he said the training ground was more than what he was expecting. Um, so he did mention the training ground. He was asked about it, but it's refreshing to see uh, a new Spurs signing not mention the stadium or the DNA 
uh, in an interview with Galini Ispurs and uh, we're, we haven't yet got an official announcement on what his number is but I'm keeping a close eye on the Spurs website and um, I will update on Twitter if something happens there. Harry Kane, he's not going. <laughs> Essentially, uh, Fabrizio Romano says that Man City made an offer to Tottenham of £100 million for Harry Kane some weeks ago, which included the possibility of including players such as Imeric Laporte and Gabriel Jesus into the deal, but Spurs chairman boss Daniel Levy immediately turned it down. Man City are waiting for Harry Kane to come back to Tottenham to have talks with Daniel Levy, Fabio Paratici and Nuno Espirito Santo before deciding on their next move. Spurs are adamant that they're going to convince him to stay at the club, and the key line here from Romano is there's a big possibility that Harry Kane will be a Tottenham player next season. Bobby says, I put my kids up for adoption if it meant we brought Romero. In fact, I put them up for adoption for you. They're doing my head in. <laughs> Amazing, Bobby. <laughs> Fences feel for you, Bob. Um, the Athletic are saying that Levy is more determined than ever to keep hold of Harry Kane. Fabio Paratici is also confident that he will not be sold this summer, while the club have communicated to the striker that they expect him to remain at Spurs, uh, to remain a Spurs player. The Athletic have also said that Man City aren't giving up on their pursuit of Kane just yet but they will not spend £160 million pounds, uh, for him. Uh, and that's the latest on Harry Kane. Personally, he, he's saying the club, I can't see him going anywhere. Uh, there's also an update on Stephen Bergwijn. Mike Vervoy of The Telegraph in uh, the Netherlands has said that Spurs have rejected a loan offer from Ajax for Stephen Bergwijn. The club are adamant that if they are to let Bergwijn go this summer, that it will have to be a permanent deal with a fee of €25 million. Euro. And a few extra stories. Alex Crook of the talk of TalkSport says that Paolo Gazzaniga, of course, Tottenham's former goalkeeper, uh, is currently undergoing a medical at championship side Fulham. Mike McGrath says that Tottenham have been overtaken by Crystal Palace for defender Joachim Anderson, who are now deemed as favourites to sign him. And if you told me that uh, two, three, four weeks ago, I'd have been gutted. But given the, the calibre centre-back we're looking at now, um, I think Joachim Anderson is currently the, the least of our concern. Finally, Football Insider say Tottenham have opened talks to Northampton Town for 19-year-old Caleb Chukwuemeka. The club are discussing offering one of their own youngsters to Northampton as part of the deal. Um, now, I don't trust Football Insider as a source whatsoever unless it is an EFL deal, in which case they are 99% of the time absolutely spot on. So this is one to keep an eye on. Tottenham have opened talks with Northampton Town for 19-year-old Caleb Chukwuemeka. Um, a, a very highly rated youngster. Uh, I, I saw a thing a while ago from some some coach on Twitter. I forget the, the handle, so forgive me. I'm um, saying he's one of the, the best performing youngsters in League One last season. And uh, this is a deal that Spurs fans should be getting excited about. But that is your general wrap up um, of all of this. As I said, so much to get through there. But the, the main things to take is that Tottenham are closing in on the signing of Christian Romero. Uh, Harry Kane is not going anywhere. Davidson Sanchez, Harry Winks and Eric Dyer and Moussa Sissoko could be on their way out. Bobby says, has Tommy Yazoo's little injury made any difference for the deal we have possibly put together? I don't think so, Bobby. Uh, I, I don't think we've even agreed a deal yet, so I, I don't think there'd be much change in that one. Tommy Yazu is expected to be fit uh, to play in the Olympics for Japan anyway, so there's nothing long-term there. I can't imagine that is, um, that's going to affect anything. Bradley says, how true is it that we have offered 55 million plus Sanchez for Kunde? As far as I'm aware, it is absolutely true. Um, I'm in contact with some people to, to kind of verify that information with more respected sources, but as I understand from a source, I fully, res uh, fully respect and believe Tottenham have made that offer of 55 plus Sanchez. Uh, for Jules Kunde. Martin says Winks isn't worth 25 million. Honestly, I'd, I'd give Everton 25 million to take him at this age. Um, I was a big defender of him up until a year or two ago, and I, I just can't stand him seeing it, can't stand seeing him at the club anymore. Um, Jack says, Would like Sissoko, Winks, Dyer, or your character Vickers Sanchez to leave to help funding incomings? And that, that's the key. It is players going out now will fund the majority of our deals coming in. And it seems to be with Fabio Paratici that we will, not just in terms of funds, but if we lose a centre mid, we sign a centre mid. Or if we lose a right winger, we sign a right winger. Almost the exact thing that's happening with this Eric Lamella, Brian Gill swap deal. Um, but look, again, it's going to be an extremely, extremely uh, busy couple of weeks. Busy end to the transfer window. As Alistair Gold said last week, we do want to get as many deals done um, before the, the whole squad return for pre-season, which I think is the end of next week or the start of the week after that, which is... Um, going to be a very busy week for us next week. Romero potentially coming in, Brian Gill, Tommy Yazoo, um, so many others. It, it, we're, we're going to we're gonna be excited, uh, I'll say that much. We will we'll be streaming again at 7pm tonight, as I said, with the Irish Hotspur, Danny Kiriak with the bun, and another guest, um, hopefully one of the lads from We Are Totten TV. Uh, but uh, keep an eye on Twitter for that, where, where I will confirm the guests when I can. Fenn says, how many signings this summer? Oof. Six or seven, I'd say. I'd say six or seven signings, and signings that will improve our first team, as in, potentially going straight into that starting 11 with the exclusion of Galini because we're not really sure um where where that one is going to go um their Mirror 13 thing wasn't fake news that that was on the website this morning um Andy Midge as well says also naming words and stadium will be around the corner and we're also 
apparently prepared to announce uh, a sponsorship deal for a training kit as well. So there is money coming in a number of different ways for Spurs, which could be funding uh, parts of these deals. But the main one will be outgoings and swap deals, which Tottenham seem uh, very, very happy to do this summer. But we are going to wrap it up there again, live at seven this evening with more context, more guests to give more opinions and all that. Um, if you have enjoyed the stream, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. But most importantly, um, if you can, click the link pinned to the top of the chat or the link at the top of the description and vote for me in the as best young content creator in the Football Creator Awards 2021. It would mean the absolute world to me. I'm, I put myself forward for this with not much expectation, but I know the, the fan base that we put together here are absolutely incredible. Uh, and if anyone can do it, uh, it is everyone watching the stream right now. So please do uh, vote for David Harris as well as the uh, best new creator. And we are Tottenham TV as the best uh, content creators for a Premier League club. Um, they all absolutely deserve these awards. And um, please just do uh, show your support to the Spurs YouTube community. It will be massively, massively appreciated. But we will wrap it up there. Uh, like, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.